Despite all the incredible advances that have been made with electric vehicles, there are still two fundamental concerns when it comes to owning one. The most common one is range. This Kia Soul EV will do 280 miles between recharges, which is pretty good, but you're always going to have half an eye on the life left in the battery. And the second worry, charging points. Currently, there's around 25,000 public sockets in the UK, a figure that is steadily rising, but is also a figure that needs to be strapped to a rocket if the sale of new petrol and diesel cars is to end in 2030, as the government intends. Will we achieve that target? Who knows? Will arguments break out as cars queue to plug in? Hopefully not, because many people have a much easier solution. Because as long as you've got off-street parking and own your property or have permission from the landlord, then you can refuel your car from the comfort of your own home. So I'm going to find out exactly what's involved if you want to install a home charger. There are a load of companies that now offer this service. After a bit of research, I chose a local company that had great online reviews. Their website has a choice of chargers, and like most tech, paying a bit more gets you a few extra functions. But first things first, can all the different chargers charge all the different cars? In a word, yes. However, like our smartphones, electric cars come with different shaped power sockets, so you'll need to ensure you have the right cable to charge your EV. For example, early Nissan Leafs need a Type 1 cable that looks like this, whereas the Kia Soul needs a Type 2. Now let's talk about charging speeds, which is another huge bonus to getting a box installed. If I tried to charge the Kia by using a domestic wall socket, it would take around 28 hours to fully charge from empty. How do I know? Well, the car has a 64 kilowatt hour battery. The typical power of a normal three pin socket is around 2.3 kilowatts. Divide 64 by 2.3 and you get roughly 28. However, a typical wall box kicks out seven kilowatts, which means the charging time is about three times faster. It's good news so far, but what about the actual installation? If you think that simply involves a fitter turning up with a screwdriver and drill, then you're going to be disappointed. First, your property needs to be inspected because not every home can have a charger. Before they can go ahead, the company needs to ensure that your electricity supply is safely earthed. Some send out a technician. However, rather conveniently, Charged EV assess your property via an app. You go through a series of questions and supply a bunch of photos. This allows them to assess the state of your electrics and whether it's possible to run a cable from your fuse box to where you want the charger to be fixed. This particular house was assessed a few weeks ago and it failed because it didn't have a particular type of isolator switch. That problem has now been rectified at a cost of around £100, but it does highlight that there are no guarantees your property will permit a charger to be fitted. And then it's time for Ricky to step in. He's our engineer for the day and he's straight down to work double-checking that everything is safe. First off, I'm just going to do a few electrical tests, make sure the property is safe and we can actually install on it. Right, so that's all good. What's next? After that, it's the trickiest bit, trying to drill through this wall and take the cable out to the charger. And with that, Ricky got his big drill out and then started laying out the cable that will connect my fuse box to the new home charger. Is there a limit to how far the charger can be from the fuse box? Up to about 100 metres, it's probably all right. 100 metres should be plenty for most UK homes, though remember the cable can't cross other people's land. If I lived in a flat, would I be able to get one of these installed? You could drop the cable down your wall into your designated parking area, yeah. 90 minutes later and the wall box was wired up and working. So you've commissioned the system, Ricky, checked that it's all safe. I got an app. What features can I use on that? There's quite a few. You can schedule your charger so that it only charges at a certain time. 
So if you've got a tariff where your energy is cheaper through the night, you can tell the app you want your charge to start at, say, midnight, and you want your car full by 7 in the morning, so it'll do that. So with this app, I don't have to be next to my car. I could be anywhere in the world. As long as it's all connected, I can schedule and control the charging from here. Yeah, that's right. And finally, what about the cost of all this? This particular charger costs just over £1,000. However, providing you can prove that you own or lease an EV, you should qualify for a government grant of up to 350 quid, bringing the price down to around 700 Go for a more basic wall box and the price will be nearer to £600. As 200 miles of range could cost as little as a fiver, the charger should have paid for itself within the first 5,000 miles of installation.